everyone and welcome to the stream. Happy to see you, actually have you back for 2018. That has been a while. Uh, a lot of things have happened actually since uh, my last stream, so I won't emphasize on what has happened actually. <laughs> All of my close friends already know what's been on for a couple, I would say, weeks. Uh, but I wanted to be back and this time not on Falcon, uh, but on X-Plane. Um, as just because I've I've been enrolled in in part of that uh, beta testing uh, happening on I would say on the NA uh, uh, 319 right now uh, as you can see this is not a 20 uh, it's really shorter in terms of size um, so if you check here um, I'm currently at uh, Lyon Saint Exupéry Airport, so Lyon in France. In France, um, this is a customer airport. Um, don't ask me where it comes from. Don't don't even ask me if you can get the file. You will never get anything from here. Uh, probably I will do something with the um, web editor, uh, trying to do a, a similar configuration for the airport uh, by default if I have time and courage to do that. <laughs> Uh, but for now, you can find the uh, airport layout that should be available on Xplain because I submitted it uh, quite a while ago, actually. So you could find that um, from uh, directly the uh, Xplain library. And uh, so yeah, here we go. We are in Lyon. We're doing to the to do the uh, quick test flight. I usually do when I take all those aircraft into beta testing. I'm, I'm usually doing that uh, Lyon Saint Exupéry to the Gaulle Airport uh, flight. Uh, this is quite short, 45 minutes in flight, um, which means that you have plenty, you have quite enough time to test a few things. Um, you don't have much time actually to get comfortable in the cockpit, but it's enough because it's quite demanding. Uh, you have to climb high and um, and things happen quite fast actually. And flight plane is really simple. Uh, so what I will do right now is refocus on the plane so you can see the uh, 3D external um, objects. Um, so here we go. So we are on uh, EasyJet right now, uh, livery. Um, I tried to do a close-up on the plane itself. Um, so you see, texturing-wise, it's this. Is more than yeah, I would say it's more than decent. It's really great actually. The the, uh, the reflections um, are modeled correctly, uh, although it's really uh, um, frame consuming from uh, from X-Line perspective. Um, there's nothing much to say. I would not say you have the size of the plane in mind, uh, so I can't really tell if some of the parts are correctly modeled or things that are probably not happening correctly. Um, I, I, I would probably let leave that to some of the guys that probably are more expert on that. Um, but I mean in terms of end consumer and for any I would say average seamer, um, this is more than decent. Uh, this is this is this is this is fine by me I would say. It's uh, it's really great. Um, so um, there we go. Uh, there's not much to say about the uh, external livery. Um, for now, it's only shipped with three liveries, I remember, I recall. Well, we can have a quick look at that, actually. Um, if we go to customize. Um, so we've got Lufthansa, Wizzair, and that's that's about it. That's about it in the default, uh, which is a white livery. Uh, so I'll stick to uh, I'll stick to the EasyJet one, and um, and so yeah, let's uh, let's go inside and uh, and and so I can actually give you a quick look on um, on what's happening here. All right, there we go. Okay, so we are now inside the cockpit. Um, Hold on a second, I'm just trying to get stuff happening here while I'm speaking to you. Um, just trying to act uh, to um, add some, uh, some a few a few things, uh, Twitch alerts actually. Um, 
a while, I forgot about that. There we go. All right, there we go. We're here. Um, okay, so um, what's next? Uh, we're inside the cockpit. This is the default view. Um, we're not really cold and dark. Um, we are right now um, plugged in the GPU, and um, and the screens and the batteries are on. Um, but that's it. Uh, nothing else has been touched. The only thing I've prepared before the flight actually is uh, powering on a bit more the brightness of the uh, of the um, of the screens and uh, making sure the loudspeaker actually is to max because I, I tend to have some issues with that um, I should warn you actually the um, there's a there's a bit of difference uh, between other pictures or videos you might see from the uh, from the from this product um, the textures right now on the buttons here you can find um, those are modified and I have modified that, that those textures for the buttons here and almost everywhere um, so don't don't really um, think this is the final product that you see right now uh, there's a lot of go there's a lot of things going on right now uh, with it uh, this is a beta 2 version, actually, with, with what I have uh, at this current stage, and uh, and and a little bit modified with with the the, uh, the button textures. Actually, I've 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 modified that to match my, I would say, uh, requirements in terms of uh, what I want to see in a in a plane. Um, so um, there we go. This is the overhead panel. Um, yeah, let me check out. I, I used to have sound problems with the fire test and uh, now it's, uh, it's, it's fine um, alright so this is the over it panel this is the uh, phone hand the PFD here uh, not much to uh, say the texturing is great this is the um, high I would say texturing uh, standards from uh, because you have to version the te standard textures and HG texture this is the HD version I have a 1080 uh, G GTX 1080, so I, I definitely got enough GPU RAM to uh, to handle uh, HG texturing. Actually, um, this is the pedestal. Um, well, everything for now. There's nothing to say about that. That's uh, classic Airbus, and texturing is fine. Uh, there's nothing to say about it. it. There, it's it's definitely what you would expect in terms of quality from uh, from that that kind of add-on. Um, well, I would say that right now, uh, let's go ahead and um, and get the into the plane. Uh, one thing that might be working, but I know this is um, don't expect too much. Uh, you you also have a 2D panel which is not working right now, as you see. Uh, that's that's something that doesn't really work well. Um, it's just, it, there's a bug actually in X plane that doesn't really allow 2D texturing uh, to display correctly as as per today. So uh, it's really messy on that side um, alright so what I would advise right now is that we plug in oh well let me show you actually the uh, menu here um, alright so this is the um, I would say configuration menu um, you can save and load uh, situations um, so that's 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 definitely uh, something you would uh, you would you would take um, just because that explain might crash, and you definitely want to have something to uh, to reload your uh, your flight if if anything happen. And also, it's uh, it's a pretty neat tool when it comes to development to um, get something happening in the cockpit, and just before it crashes, actually the uh, situation is loaded, and uh, and you have the uh, you have the the developer then has the information that he, he requires to analyze the situation, which is a good thing. Um, you have that uh, aircraft configuration panel here. Um, so this is the loadout sheet. Um, you can set in the numbers of uh, passengers, the distribution, if it's more forward and aft, um, uh, the uh, cargo weight. Uh, for now, it's only in kilograms. Uh, and then you've got the um, information regarding the charts. Uh, so the zero fuel weight to uh, center of gravity, and the zero fuel weight, uh, all in kilograms. Um, so I will 
take the default ones and apply those load settings. Um, same for the fuel. Uh, I will definitely load exactly the same thing. And what's uh, really, really uh, convenient here is that you'll find um, the uh, takeoff performance uh, information here, and that will only load up once you have the um, um, once you have the um, uh, the uh, departure runway uh, selected. So that's uh, that's really uh, that's that's really neat when it comes to uh, configuring correctly uh, the plane. Uh, in terms of ground services, uh, right now what I'll do is I'll plug in the eye pressure here. Um, so uh, we have actually the uh, bleed that comes in. Um, those are for future releases, fault, reserve, uh, well that's a reserve page, so there's nothing to expect here. Um, 3D sound fading, uh, that could be convenient if you want to have bit, add a bit more realism when it comes to uh, hearing the flaps or the PTU sounds. Um, that's definitely something you would actually take here when it comes to realism. Uh, you can select the type of engines if you want to have the IA, IAE engines or the CFMs um, and, and decide a few things such as the display reflections, window reflections, that's something you can actually, uh, you can actually set here. Um, you can load yourself up onto the co-pilot seats, the first officer, and have a couple more action, uh, options here. Uh, settings actions. Um, I've customized a few things here, um, like you have a, a few customizations, you such as the flare low. I, I definitely need to take, check the manual one to see or ask uh, Biden Q actually if he has uh, Give me a bit more inf insight on that feature. Uh, it's probably weird somewhere in the manual, but as, you will, as usual, um, I'm the kind of guy trying to discover things uh, <laughs> a bit on my own. Um, all right, so um, there we go. Um, uh, that's about it for the uh, quick reference uh, menu here. Uh, we probably will pop up that when it comes to a quick alignment. I definitely want to have something. Uh, the quick alignment process would probably be uh, something that we uh, expecting and, 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 and touching a bit uh, a bit later on once we uh, we roll out the the uh, cockpit configuration. Um, all right. So uh, right now, what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll not do a conventional uh, checkup list um, checklist uh, for salaring out the airplane. Probably someone will will strike my let's see, hit me on the on the finger, saying, "Well, you're not doing the things correctly if you want to test an aircraft." But yeah, I'm always about a bit about going outside the uh, I would say main roads and taking those uh, little. Uh, muddy roads to uh, see if uh, if I can break things and uh, and push things to the limits. Alright, so um, there are a couple of things here working fine. Um, what we would do right now is um, probably set that to navigation so we, we can uh, definitely request the alignment process. Um, remember for Airbus, everything is about being black is good. <laughs> um, so any button right now that is extinguished is uh, something that is, is good. So, um, alright, so emergency exit, we'll probably set that to arm. Um, sit belts, um, uh, wheels, take these wings, nav and logo, we'll set that on because we'll be starting at some point the engines. Um, stroke to auto and beacon, we'll, we'll set that on. Uh, once we start the engines, actually, the strobe um, will be uh, should be around the runway, actually, when we uh, once we start rolling. All right, I will not use the APU uh, because we right now have a ground bleed, um, so I'll start up the engines with the uh, with the ground bleed that is currently connected to the aircraft. Um, I'll leave everything B for now here. Um, I could actually give you a quick heads up on the lights configurations and tests. Uh, so everything you see here right now has been modified by me. Uh, so it's definitely not what you could see in other videos from others, uh, other beta testers that are currently uh, testing the plane uh, at the same time as me. 
Um, so this is about it, about all the uh, buttons that are currently um, um, modeled. Uh, Alright, so let's uh, take that brightness a bit up. Uh, Alright, um, what else? Um, <coughs> let's take the CDU up and uh, so let's start configuring stuff here. Um, so the change code and idle perf uh, performance here is not modeled. I can't I can't change anything right now um, if I wanted to. Um, but um, I mean, th there's no real um, importance to modify that since we're in a simulator. There's nothing to say about that since. Uh, uh, the plane will always behave and 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 feel, um, I would say, um, perfect in terms of performance and engines because uh, there's no maintenance, there's no nothing like that. Um, so what we do right now is go to the init page, um, um, set up the uh, flight plan I want to load here. So that's uh, definitely uh, the information I have. I could refine here the information regarding the lat long uh, stuff here. Um, but what I'll do right now is uh, quickly align the RS. Um, so while the alignment process is, is already starting, as you can see here on the ACAS, um, I would uh, go back to the um, configuration menu here and just uh, hit the editor uh, quick align. And then we've got the alignment process over. That's, uh, that's what I want to achieve here. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's set up a few things. Um, 280 is the um, um, cruise flight level we want to achieve. Um, definitely load the flight plan I already have in memory uh, on the CDU. And um, let's go for... Um, all right, let's go for the um, cost index. Uh, I don't need to be really cons conservative on the fuel. I put something like 50 here. Um, yeah, that really that's what I wanted. Um, so we'll go to the init B page and set up. So this is where we actually need the um, I see the screen uh, back up and get the information about the aircraft configuration. Um, so what we would do here is set up the uh, zero fuel weight uh, center of gravity and the zero fuel weight um, mass. Um, so as written here is 29.5 slash um, 51.4. We set it up end of your block fuel since we're not using the NEAP right now is uh, still 7 tons. So there we go. Um, Init B page is now ready to roll. Uh, I will not set an alternate um, field. I could actually set, for example, um, Brussel EBBR if I wanted to and uh, set up a secondary flight plan. The secondary flight plan actually, actually is, is implemented, so if you want to have a secondary pl flight plan, you can definitely set that in the, uh, in the flight plan um, here. Um, so there we go, flight number, well, one, two, three, we should be doing that, all right. That's, uh, that's, one, that's, uh, that's it for now. Um, okay, so uh, now for the flight plane. Um, let's check the XMVARO br weather briefing. Um, I'll be uh, changing that here. Uh, let's refresh. <coughs> all right, so Lima, Foxtrot Lima Lima, what does it say? Uh, for now, it's 10.15 on the Q&H, which is uh, matching uh, both uh, captain and first officer Q&H settings here. Um, um, wind 170 for 9 knots, so it means that we'll be departing from runway 18. Uh, it, this time, it will be 18 right. Um, and visibly clear, broken 40, uh, and temperature yeah, 10, 2.3. Um, all right, that's uh, that's good. Um, nothing else. Um, nothing else right now. Um, yeah. So we'll be. Um, let's uh, let's imagine that we've been uh, discussing with the ATC and uh, clearance departure. Um, 
and we've got the uh, information from uh, from the from the from the uh, from clearance, and uh, so basically, all right. So it's not 1817 now. It's just an uh, old-fashioned guy that uh, remembers from three years ago that the runway were th were still 36 and 18s on uh, on that airport. Um, so we'll be we would be departing from uh, 17 right. Um, uh, so ILS, yeah, no, it's a, it's a 4,000 kilometer, uh, it's a 4 kilometer runway, so that's the uh, longest one we have on the airport, and so we would be definitely uh, taking that one. Uh, then we uh, have Mokip as the first waypoint of our flight plan, so we would be selecting Mokip 8 Sierra procedure, and we would be inserting that. Um, yeah, there's been a discussion I had with the dev actually on the on whether he wants to simulate the Talus uh, version of the CDU uh, because in theory um, that would be in the revi um, revision uh, well, I would be revising right now uh, re revision mode of the uh, flight plan and we would need to insert and acknowledge that I uh, I'm the temporary flight plan to implement it into the active flight plan so this is on the ground right now not implemented or the logic right now is that on the ground everything that you modify is going to be active right away um, definitely not the philosophy that you have on the Talus um, CDU that is in real life but that's a discussion ongoing so we'll see whether that's going to change or not for the future for the final release or later on for further uh, developments and, and releases of the plane after uh, first release. Um, so we already got the um, flight plan and the procedure, so what we could do go here is change that to flight plan mode and um, and roll out, actually check the uh, all the waypoints and uh, zoom out a bit so we can have a better view on what's happening. Okay, then we've got the um, Delta Juliet Lima, and after Delta Delta Juliet Lima, uh, we've got a flight plan discontinuity that we see here, and that expected because uh, we have not selected the uh, arrival uh, for um, the goal airport, but that that will be done once we reach uh, cruise level. Uh, that's going to be really really tough because we will need to have the um, information. Um, right away uh, in terms of um, uh, we'll, 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 we'll monitor what's the uh, current uh, weather forecast for the Gold Airport in Paris um, alright okay so um, we'll seek to the flight plan we have here right now uh, and that's it okay so let's uh, go back to the arc mode um, I'll stick to 40 nautical miles now, or even 20 to uh, check a bit more the departure um, procedure. Uh, all right, so um, what could we check here? Um, engine well, for now, uh, since uh, it had the um, FedEx have been inactive enough, uh, we don't have any more any, any information written here, so that's expected. Um, bleed. All right. So right now we see that we've got the external bleed that is here, and we've not we have not crossfed uh, anything. So we could actually get that start valve open, and we will have here the bleed that will. <coughs> so we see the valve has actually open, and now we've got air um, in the secondary circuit for the for the uh, for the bleed pressure. Uh, Cabin pressure. For now, everything set back to auto. Electrical panel. Nothing to say much here. Actually, we can pop up the uh, stuff here and um, get battery to off. See if anything's charging. Nothing since we've been on external power for for quite a while. And that's something I want to test a bit more extensively, uh, just to see if we've got any. We don't see any. Uh, changes here in terms of uh, amperage uh, on, on on different circuits we have that sh <coughs> that actually should change a bit, but that's not the case. So um, probably something that, that uh, should 
get a bit more real life feedback to see if it's matching what we usually have in real life. Uh, but anyway, not an expert here, so I'll uh, leave that to the experts regarding that. Uh, hydraulic pressure, should we shouldn't get anything much knowing that the only the electrical uh, pressure system should be right now available. Um, I could actually cycle the brakes to see if the pressure increases. I'm not sure it actually does that. Um, on the accumulator pressure, I remember I did something like that. I or maybe the rudder. Yeah, that's probably something I need to uh, I need to check with uh, real life notes I have about the accumulator and pressure systems. Once uh, when you cycle the brakes, um, probably I should have the. Um, let me check the electrical pump should be probably off. Let's just take everything off actually. Oh. No. Um, and uh, now we've got everything off, the pressure should now, as you can see, decrease and cycling that should get the pressure off for good. Yeah. But I don't see anything moving right now in the information pressure. Yeah, something I should check on the manual actually. Alright, let's, let's get back to uh, to no normal mode. Um, okay. Okay. Anyway, um, now we've got fuel, 7000, that's what we expect. AP, we will not be using it. Air conditioning system. Right now, uh, that's okay. Doors wheels, uh, flight controls, nothing moving obviously because we have not started any engines. Um, okay, all should be cycling, but it's, it's not implemented. The uh, button here is not, is not implemented. All right, and then you've got the system page here. Um, all right, so just and select here so we can leave the uh, lower cast doing its job. Okay, um, so right now I'll set the um, altitude to 28,000. I don't have any uh, ATC right now, so I don't really bother with that. Um, okay, so what uh, we could do now is actually starting the engines. Um, so we'll take the ignition start. And we'll probably uh, first what we'll do is that we'll start engine 2 and once we start pushing back we'll start in the process engine 1 with the uh, bleed from engine 2 okay um, can I do that maybe I'll need the APU alright so um, I'm not sure the bleed pressure will be enough actually for the cross plate to uh, get the first engine starting up maybe yes maybe not I don't know we'll, we, we'll start actually we'll, 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 we'll check and, and if it doesn't work, we'll uh, we'll start the AP. That's uh, something that uh, we can actually do, and that, that's not that's not too much of a bummer. All right, so now let's start the engine two. So number two is started correctly. 
everything in green. No abnormal temperature, so we're we're fine. Um, okay, so we'll leave the um, we'll leave the um, start open here, um, and what we'll do is that we'll now disconnect everything we have um, from the ground services. So now you see the generator from uh, engine number two has started, so we are fine. Ah, I forgot to put on the beacon, actually, I should have done that before. Moving the plane, or starting the engine, uh, let's put that to, sorry, taxi. Um, and let's request the pushback. Run to cockpit, please show me where we want to go. Okay, so I have to. I uh, thought the pre plan would work. It did not, so let's start over here. Yeah, that's um, that's uh, gliding Kiwi. Um, Q pack is no more. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's called Talis now. Um, I would not say why it's called Talis because um, I know why, but I would not tell it unless the developer acknowledge and ask for it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, um, now it's called Talis. It's based on several things that were available in the coup on the QPAC, and especially the excellent uh, fly-by-wire system uh, that was already present when I remember, I recall, x 9, where the first Airbus, to eight, yeah, Airbus uh, 320 that was uh, released for x 9, it was only a 2D panel, but uh, so yeah, yeah, actually uh, Lightning Kiwi did a really neat job on that plane, even though it was a 2D cockpit at that time, but it was clearly enough for uh, for anything that I would say average seamer needed, and I, I really enjoyed flying with it when I was flying a lot on IVO and stuff. Um, Alright, um, so what we could do now is actually request for, uh, now we've got, I should have everything ready for the pushback, so um, I'll uh, request. Run to cockpit, please show me where we want to go. Okay, that doesn't work, right. Okay, so, maybe that's something. Connect first. Maybe I'm not connected. Run to cockpit, tow is driving up. Okay, so now we've got it. Alright, so let's go to uh, external VM and see if our tow truck is actually coming up and breaking the fence here. <laughs> um, Alright, let's wait a bit. Actually, the the, um, the voice for better pushback is one of my good friends, so uh, it's glad to hear him whenever I fly X plane and, and request the pushback. So, yeah. Okay, all doors and latches are closed. Ready to connect. Then he will request for uh, the uh, parking brake to be released and the pushback will start, and then we'll start the engine number two once we finish the pushback. If you if I recall the procedure from some of the airlines. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see uh, things happening here. Connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Alright, releasing parking brake. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Yep, that's definitely hey, what I'm going to do. Quit blinding me with your taxi light. Turn it off. <laughs> that's uh. Turn it off, yeah. I will. 
All right, so um, let's see if we can start actually engine number two right now. Um, I don't know if I need to put a bit more pressure. I'll, I'll put, put a bit pressure, I would say, uh, on engine number two, so bleed gets a bit more efficient. It's definitely the pressure is rising. We we'll definitely get something. Ignition starting. All right. All right. We've got to do a good start. All right. What is it doing? Okay. Well, we'll see. All right. We've got a good start. Number one. Procedure would request the ignition to be up and running until we take off, but I might be confusing with the bone procedures. Uh, now we are actually getting on the taxi. I'll start the uh, clock. sit here and, uh, and take the taxiway upwards on the left. Oh, there's something I forgot, actually. Now we've selected the uh, runway. Uh, there's something we forgot from the performance page, actually. Uh, takeoff information. Um, so this is where it gets important. Here, for example, um, now we can select the uh, configuration we want to have for, for a takeoff. And um, there we go. So you select the configuration you want, the flaps configuration, and you have everything pre-calculated actually, which is neat. Um, uh, center of gravity and threshold, and uh, that's um, that's something I requested to be changed um, because it's usually down, so the N and up for the numbers behind. Uh, so definitely that's something for me that needs to be changed. Uh, but we can take the information from uh, flex stamp, for example, and uh, we'll set here one slash and up uh, zero one, for example, for the trim as per calculate here. Um, engine out acceleration. Uh, that's uh, something I don't really master, so I will not set anything up here. Uh, but I will set V one. V2, V3, and V, rotate and V2. Oh, by the way, uh, Nemov, I need to check with you because I think yesterday I did not implement VR, but I did implement V2, so that's why I went into SRS mode. And I should try that, but offline, I don't want to right now because the SRS mode will take the uh, V2 plus 10 with uh, plus plus minus 5 on the speed from a man managed speed perspective um, no 155 sorry All right. I think that would be alright okay so we can do a straight left then. That's interesting. 
Uh, it's the thing, bit of pushback, isn't that for that Aston to uh, that type of plane? It's definitely doing something strange. It's sort of stopped now. Stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, this is definitely something. Oh, this is a bit of ocean, so obviously the thing is not really fast to do. Operation complete, set back in break. Alright. Disconnecting tower, stand by. Disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time on other side flight. <laughs> Alright, see you then, Moth. Okay, so now we'll start pulling. It's gonna all right. So taxi. Setting that back to auto. And it's gonna all right. Easy parking brake. And let's roll. Yeah, we're far from the uh, configuration page, uh, Justin. Let me know if the uh, sound is a bit too much. The audio feedback. So, if uh, if you feel it's uh, it's a bit too loud, don't hesitate to tell me. All right. So let's start the. Um, well, like we do, call the uh, taxi after pushback checklist, before taxi checklist. But right now, I'm not really following up those things. All right. Spoilers are. Takeoff configuration tests and QNH adjusted. Yeah, I know it's cheated. <laughs> Let me uh, just uh, remove the. Uh, Let me remove the uh, output from the uh, FPS. I've actually uh, forced that to 30 FPS, uh, so that's why it's not changing from 30 FPS. Probably a stunt bridge. I'm trying to reach the. Uh...
Yo, so yes, this is um, this is still a beta version, so don't don't consider it's a final release date. It's definitely something that will change in a couple weeks. In a couple weeks from now, uh, as already stated, the uh, buttons and stuff already have have been modified. I've, I've changed that to my uh, to my taste. So. Um, this is definitely not the texturing from the uh, from the actual uh, release beta two that I that beta testers have received. Uh, I've modified that to uh, match a bit more my uh, standards. I would say. Alright. So in theory, I yeah, should be uh, checking for uh, traffic and stuff, which I will not because I'm. Right, right now, alone in X-Plane, in that simming world. Um, Alright, so we'll turn on the uh, green lights, that to take off, line up. Uh, pretty much lined up, I would say, I'd say we, we're, we're good to go. Um, so, discussing with real pilots, what would happen here is basically they would uh, check 50% because what happens is that the spool time from some of the engine, depending on the number of hours the engine have been put through, um, that could actually change a lot in terms of spooling time and you can see one engine spooling like four seconds or three seconds after the other one which would result in you getting out of the runway easily so usually they put 50 percent here and release brakes Stamp for now. All right, rotate. Okay, positive climbing gear up. Try to uh, follow up the uh, flight director. Yeah. What's up? Speed, 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 speed. It's last, so oh, yeah. uh, so left. I'm quite surprised actually. The flight director should have been saying I should go left. Speed, speed, speed. what we have here on the navigation display. Alright, let's move back that back to standard. Alright, there we go. And stabilize the plane. That will happen soon enough. And there we go. Okay. So I can put that.
crossing 10,000. how the uh, planes behave itself. Alright, so now we're back to uh, Manage Navigation, Manage LNAV actually. Okay, so what we do now is. Uh, I definitely want to skip some stuff, so uh, I want to go direct to Mokip. So now press the position to milk it. Usually uh, controllers will grant you direct uh, to milk it. Alright, seven minutes since we pulled out from the uh, Gate. Continuing our climb to uh, flight level 280, and uh, can actually tell people to wander around and uh, and go pee pee wee wee if they want. <laughs> All right. So as uh, expected, we are closing on. So the uh, Delta to Lima, and we have now to uh, select uh, the arrival procedure. Um, so whatever happens, I want to take a 26 left. With uh, eight whiskey procedure. Still temporary, so we will now acknowledge the modifications, and now we have to continually have a flight plan almost until the arrival, but not really because um, in real life the goal is uh, doing some radar vectoring for arrivals and coach and stuff, so uh, they don't really have procedures that are usually in this continuity that we'll see, and we'll actually see that now. Uh, manual as you see and then a flight plan discontinuity uh, to close up on the initial fix of the 26 left. Alright, there we go. Uh, we're closing up on the uh, top of the climb at the, same at the same time and if I recall the top of descent as you can see is not far after uh, Dijon actually like you have to wait something like 15 to 
20 nautical miles for your bird or nothing more. Just going to be 28 nautical miles. Closing up. Alright, approach what we are on. Uh, since uh, we've got something like 15 20 minutes, uh, the weather forecast will not change that much. So we can already pre feel. information here. Let me pull up the web page actually go and check the event are for uh, the goal airport. Alright, so what's the weather forecast? Alright. Q and H is one nine. Temperature is six degrees. Fields is around 200. Okay, so we've got that covered. Uh, landing configuration full. That's the uh, version we want to have for the landing. And those settings should remain as is until the end of the uh, flight, actually. Okay, so. Uh, Let's go be an outside just to enjoy the view. Yeah, we need to speak with, uh, with the dev about the sounds. Sound loop, there's something about the sound loop for me. Uh, maybe I'm a bit too uh, demanding. And it's like it's like quad sound, but that's a bit of sounds. All right, now we're we, we okay. We've reached cruise altitude.
Ah, oh, come on, you already know what it is. <laughs> So yeah, um, you see about the texturing I told you last time, I've changed everything here, uh, it's far more realistic than what I had before. So yeah, uh, about the functional leads that are currently modeled. Um, since I can have a point of comparison with the flight factor beta uh, 320, um, the hold is working. Um, you can enable or to alternate the alternate flight plan is working. Uh, for those asking, as you can see here, uh, there's no um, sh um, how you call that. Flight plan, uh, shift, and uh, fix info. Uh, those currently are not modeled. Uh, probably on future versions, I don't know yet, uh, but for now, those are not modeled. Uh, definitely not. I don't know actually in the flight factor. I've not tested the flight factor on that aspect, so I definitely don't know if the flight factor is currently um, modeling that. I should probably try it and see. There's a lot of wind currently in France, so I'm not really surprised by the wind we have currently and see how much um, heading. Sh All right, and you see heading. What we have as a heading. Uh, the weather actually is working. It's just the X-plane overlay, but it's still working. If I want, and the terrain also, having on navigation display is working. But now we're too high to get anything. Oh yeah, we've got something. Okay. Well, I don't really need it right now. Well, currently the weather will no, not show up because there's no storms, there's nothing here. So uh, it, it does work, I've, I've tested it, but it's uh, it's the uh, default explain over. There's a whole lot of wind, that's for sure. Alright, we can check the constraints here. And on the offset. Oh really, so the offset is... I thought the offset was not modeled. Okay, so work in progress. Okay. <laughs> At least it's written, it doesn't crash when you're trying. Alright, we'll. Definitely waiting for the 
set to start. Coming up. If you got a question, please ask. Shoot away. I'm always happy to uh, Yeah, I'll decrease the uh, sound of the engines. We're 20 miles from descent. Closing up little by little, but the thing is that as you can see, we've got a lot of wind ahead, so uh, uh, that 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 keeps us from speeding a bit on the flight plan. So we're definitely uh, getting a lot of air resistance. I'm surprised it's not actually more bumpy than we have right now. Let's hope we'll uh, get on the ground correctly. Descent is coming up. I'll put ten thousand. I'll start descending now. Descent has started now. Yeah. 
So you see the uh, speed bracket we have here when it comes to descent. So the plane will try to stick with the flight path descent and the uh, and the speed bracket here. Yeah, for now it's working. Uh, it's definitely um, it's definitely working. Um, there are a few things I'd like to see improved, uh, but mostly for now, I'm really really happy with the uh, with the way it works. To be honest. But once again, it's um, I would say I'm a, it's not an I'm not really objective when I say that. Um, it's more about subjective view, uh, given my status as a beta tester of this plane. Um, but as the as a point of comparison between the flight factor and this one, since people will tend to compare the, those two aircraft, um, I would say this plane has nothing to envy to the uh, flight factor in, in, except. A few things, a few cosmetic things, such as the uh, tablet here, or the uh, electronic flight bag that the flight factor has here on the window. Um, but once again, I find that the uh, pop-up menu we have here is definitely doing the job correctly. As you can see here, we already have the uh, information when it comes to. Uh, oh, that's not normal. Minus 33. That's <laughs> that's not good. Um, so yeah, for me it's uh, it's hundred percent functional uh, from uh, from what I see here and from from what I understand um, from the plane. Uh, what I'd like to see right now is that um, I'm kind of confused to be honest. Um, I thought I thought that would be working. I thought that w we had some constraints on top of the speed. I thought we had something like 110 something. Uh, I should read the procedures again. So probably things have changed since last time I flew that path, that route. So I need to check that. Alright, let's uh, lower a bit the range. Let's stick to 80. It's descending slowly. Kind of confuse the um, red map. Should be selecting something a bit closer. There's something I've not tested to be honest in the performance page. I think there was something you could activate here to get the um, to get the uh, uh, wind data, uh, but I have not tested it. No, no, that's, this is not strange because what you can see here is that after PG 522. Um, we go manual because this is vectoring to Charles de Gaulle Airport. Um, so that there is a flight plan discontinuity here. So that's that's expected. Uh, that's something you would see in any aircraft uh, with that kind of procedure when you have vectoring to the uh, to the airfield. All right. So now we have to decrease to the uh, to 50 bracket for the speed.
All right. Getting back on the vertical flight pass now. I can zoom on the ND, I can zoom whatever you want. Me pull out the constraints if you want, if you want to have a clearer view on what's happening here. Okay, we're passing over Trois. I think over Mayo Oscar. I can leave those two open if you need. That uh, that can be handy, but I cannot resize the uh, the windows for now. Uh, since we started our descent, I'll tell the passengers to go back since we um, textures are clean. Yeah, there's nothing to say about that, to be honest. Yeah. The only thing I'm a bit confused is about the uh, radio navigation here. I thought that would be automatically, maybe if I clear that out. I thought that it would be automatically selected. But for now there's nothing. Uh, I thought the plane would select an EV or a station close to the uh, to the flight plan and uh, get that as a reference. But it does not. Uh, if you click it will actually select the uh, closest uh, VOR station. What would I change a Q and H? I don't want to mess up things. For now, it's still standard, and as long as we don't go below 5,000, there's no way for me to change the Q&H. You should know that. <laughs> We're not in BMS. Not. It's not because we go below 18, flight level 180, that we need to change the Q&H. <laughs> well, not in Falcon, okay? Change Q and H here. Yes, I can. All right, stand by. Sender. Okay. I'm stand by. Okay. Yep. All right. I've not tested it to be honest. Great to see it's working. Well can't do anything for you. You shouldn't be in bed right now. we go lower the uh, speeds the the wind speed seems um, seems to um, decrease but yeah well I'll do now is uh, I'll do direct PG 
522 just to skip ahead direct to PG 522 okay uh, I guess now the plane wants to uh, try to get lower and faster maybe, maybe it will request for uh, actually for a bit of uh, speed brakes that's weird that shouldn't do that, that should stick to uh, 220 uh, 250 sorry Something went wrong. That shouldn't go that that up. Yeah, something went wrong. Going direct should not remove the constraint of speed, which is doing it right now. This is not normal because now we're switching back to 250. Which is way too high in terms of speed. Alright, anyway, uh, what I'll do now is activate the landing sequence since we're closing up on the um, on the airfield. Activate approach phase, confirm. I've got everything set in, I confirm that, and uh, let's stick to what we have. should uh, go to 4,000. And after PG 522, uh, we'll go manual. Yep, that's the weather like in Paris right now. Alright, landing lights on. <laughs> I'm not going to your place, man. <laughs> I'll stick to Paris right now. <laughs> All right, 325. Oh, maybe a bit. No, a bit. Go a bit more left because we have a kind of a lot of speed right now. A lot of uh, wind right now. Uh, so I'll stick to what I have. 312 should be fine. After PG22. Uh, so we'll go ma manual editing, and uh, we'll see what it go, what it does. We'll go further right if I see that uh, we're not losing enough altitude. And we already have the uh, ILS uh, preset.
Everything will go quite fast after that, to be honest. Alright, we should go manual now. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stick to manage speed actually. Well, in terms of systems, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to say about system. Systems wise, it's definitely better. I mean, it's Q back initially, so. Everyone knows that QPAC has always been really better in terms of uh, in terms of systems and flight by wire, especially. I've always been being a huge fan of the uh, flight by war system for QPAC, so uh, as definitely the uh, the legacy of the QPAC is definitely in there, and uh, that's uh, what everyone has been waiting for since uh, version two of the uh, Airbus twenty tweet uh, 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 well the A three twenty from the QPAC for sure. Yeah, yeah, um, it was the first Airbus. I uh, would say the first plausible Airbus. Uh, and explain explain nine actually. I've, uh, I've I've been on that plane since probably the beginning of the uh, of its creation, and I've been following the project since then. Okay, so now we're closing on. Uh, yeah, passing. Alright, so it's 10.09. Same here, 10.09. And if you want it to be correct here, it would be 10.09 too. Uh, let's just check again. Uh, X and Faro, weather briefing. Yeah, this is definitely not showing what we want. I want FPG ten oh nine, yeah. Ten oh nine. All right, we've got Coulomier for both. Localizer for sure would not be working right now because we don't receive any signal. have to intercept yeah what we could do here is uh, go direct to uh, the intersection point in that case the uh, navigation will um, go back but I don't receive anything all right so now we got the SU not sure we receive any of the localizer. Overcast, yeah, yeah, unfortunately. I don't need, I don't know if I need to confirm here. Not in database.
All right, let me pull up the map. Just to see. But I guess we're too far right now. So we're taking the left here. Details. Conditions, all right. So we've got... I wonder if that's... All right, I want to have the LFPG. LFPG. Uh, there's no approach profile selected right now. No approach selected. LFPG. No, I don't see it right now. So we're definitely selected on the ILS 26 Lima. Twenty-six left, we said. Okay. I uh, just want to get the... Uh Check actually the charts quickly. DSU one oh eight thirty five. There we go. We've got the localizer approach. And we're above. Now we're above. Totally above that. Let's go down. Get everything set up. Put it flaps. Landing sequence. can stick to the arc. Six hundred eight miles. Ah, I think that will be rejected. Two thousand five hundred. Oops. I 
I'm a bit brutal with the plane, to be honest, right now. It's just that there are a few things that are disturbing me. Alright, cabin check. Everyone's smaller arm. Laps full. <laughs> One thousand. Uh, yeah, landing flaps two. And settings are not right. What we'll do now is that we'll um, we'll go for a go around sequence now. So let's go back here, go around. 500. Yeah, settings are not right. I'm not sure I get. 400. Okay, let's see, let's see. There's still a chance for that. 100 about. 300. Yeah, we're minimum. All right, two hundred. We're good. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Retard. 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 Ah, oh, we made it. And I forgot the. Uh, Auto brake. Actually, so should have requested the auto brake from my end. Yeah, the landing was a bit, the uh, approach was a bit messy on the end, but there's a few parameters that I'm a bit too used to Boeing, to be honest. That's probably why it was a bit confused. And depending on some of the systems, it's a bit different. I did, I did. I should probably not have, it was not necessary. I got rid of the Russian edition. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, yeah. <laughs> I'll start the APU. No entry. Oh, come on. Let's go. Yeah, that's what people say, but when you see here, for example, it's partly gray. It's probably a bit too blue, but depends on the light, actually, component that you have. It turns to a bit green. So it really depends on the lights that you haven't explained right now. Alright, APU available. I can go for APU bleed, so when we're on the uh, on the parking area, we can go and, uh, and shut off the engines without uh, powering off the bleed.
Yeah, when it's um, the thing is that when there's a bit of shade, um, it's definitely like really blue. But under light, it changes color, so which is a bit weird. But I think the flight factor is exactly the same. So um, it's a bit it's a bit different. All right, if you wanted, you could get the uh, terrain on the here. But not really necessary right now. All right, let's get that uh, weather off. We don't really need it. And let's go for that jetway. Yeah, companies, when you have a long runway, usually ask pilots to uh, not to use um, uh, reverse, uh, as it's easier to replace the carbon um, brakes uh, than uh, engines. <laughs> Uh, let's consider we're on the park here correctly. Parking brake set. Everything's fine. Okay, let's uh, just pour up the FD here. Okay, and uh, engine off. Yeah, it's it's a better, but I would consider as always more of it as a alpha. Exactly, because for me it's uh, definitely missing a few, not a few features, and I, I won't say features, but definitely there's uh, room for improvement uh, before the first release. Uh, but I'm definitely really confident in what's going to uh, what's going to be achieved here. All right, we can uh All right, I think we're good to go here. Um well, that was a demo actually a quick flight. Um We're stopped that 1 hour flight door to door. Uh that's about it guys uh as always thank you for watching uh it's been a pleasure showing showcasing you that plane um it's definitely a nice plane to see um in action uh as always remember that at this current date uh that i'm showcasing the plane is definitely something that will probably not be exactly um what you uh, what would you, you what you would have in final release? So um, if you watch back that video in a couple of weeks, things might improve and will improve for sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, I probably showcase the plane a bit later on uh, during the uh, state different stages that we'll have with the plane. So stay tuned um, and I hope you liked uh, the this showcase. And uh, as always, I'll. Uh, I'll uh, keep you updated with a new uh, x plane and obviously uh, coming up uh, Falcon videos because I, I don't forget my F-16 sticks and I will do a few things on the f on the on the F-16 for sure in the coming days, weeks, well, whatever. Okay, as always, thank you for watching, guys. It was really nice to be back with you and first stream of 2018 with a brand new plane, as you can see here. And, uh, well, until next time, have uh, a nice day, evening, wherever you are, and see you soon. Cheers, bye-bye.